For the past 40 years, the Holden Commodore has been the quintessential Australian family car. But in more recent generations, like this VF, it's been getting a reputation for being somewhat of a sports sedan. But to show that you don't need the stonking 6.2 litre V8 to have an entertaining family drive, we're going to take this SV6 Black Edition on an entertaining family drive to show that it can be, well, an entertaining family drive. Well, before we hit the road for some, well, some quieter streets and better weather, let's have a look at what we've got. Well, under here is Holden's LFX 3.6 litre V6. It's a pretty modern unit. You've got variable valve timing and direct injection for more power and, well, better economy. It's not a bad lump either. There's 210 kilowatts or around 280 horsepower and 350 newton metres on tap. Let's have a look inside. The V6 drives the rear wheels via this six-speed automatic transmission. And one of the cool things about a Commodore is you can still option in a six-speed manual. Now, our uh, regular family's actually at school today, so they're being replaced by James and Tom. Now, there's plenty of space back there. The boys get a center armrest, which also doubles as a ski port. It's got cup holders and a big flat area that they can play Uno on. There's mat pockets, door bins, and even air vents, so they're gonna be very comfy. The boot's 495 liters, but the seats don't fold down, other than the ski port, that is. So if you do need more room, get the wagon. All right, boys, you comfy? Are we there yet? Yeah, right. Okay, let's hit the road. Now while we make our way to some more entertaining tarmac, we might as well cover off the basics. This is the 2016 Holden Commodore SV6 Black Edition, even though it's white. And for its name, you get some uh, black trimmed components on the outside, a nice little lip spoiler on the boot, and some 18-inch alloy wheels. Inside you get Holden's uh, really cool colour heads-up display, navigation on the 8-inch MyLink touchscreen, some nice red stitching around the cabin, and of course, being a special edition, you get floor mats. The rest of it is pretty standard Commodore, which as we know, is a pretty good thing. And the Commodore is still what is considered to be a large car. And even though on the road it doesn't feel overly big, inside there's stacks and stacks of room, both up here in the front and for the guys there in the back. Vision out the front is really impressive and still out the back. Now, of course, you can get a Commodore in the uh, sports wagon body style, uh, which does hamper that rearward vision a little bit, but it certainly doesn't make it a problem. Part of the package too on the uh, SV6 is blind spot detection and rear cross traffic alert as well. So you are helped by technology, even if the vision doesn't help you already. Now the SV6 is essentially the mid-grade Commodore. You've got the Evoque at the bottom end, which are basically, uh, well, government fleet cars. The SV6 for normal people, then the SS above. Pretty much the only thing that this thing doesn't get are powered seats. Everything else is here. The seats themselves are really nice and comfortable. It's a combination of a, uh, a suede and a leather type material, and they really do work, particularly on long touring miles. They're very comfy, very supportive. You've got uh, reach and rake adjustable on the back. You've got reach and rake adjustable on the steering, so you can get yourself into a really, well, comfortable driving position, uh, especially for long distance touring. Now we mentioned uh, navigation on, on the MyLink, which does come as a, an extra here on the Black Edition. It's not standard on a normal SV6. It's a $750 option, which I still think is a bit strange. So it goes to show the extra value that you get out of this pack, which by the way is with an automatic transmission, drive away for around 40 grand. There's plenty of other stuff too. So MyLink itself has support not only now for, for nav, you get internet streaming, audio, you've got your Bluetooth, you've got other media support as well. It's not a bad system. Dating a little bit, the, uh, the navigation itself is quite good. It's got traffic, but some of the other menu interfaces aren't quite as modern as they really could be, but generally it works pretty well. As we mentioned, you've got blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert, there's a forward collision assistance system, and the heads-up display uh, that you get as an extra on the Black Series can display, I think it's around four different types uh, of readout, including uh, a rev meter and a g-force meter, which is really good fun for when mum's not in the car and you, know, you want to show off to the kids. This model gets automatic parking as well, which for the Commodore does both uh, parallel and perpendicular. Not that I think anybody really should need it to do a perpendicular park, but it's kind of cool to know that it's there. Now, as we head down the freeway here, the Commodore really is in its element on a cruise. This is a big car for a big country. I know we've said that before uh, about the Commodore and about other cars, but this role of long miles, lots of comfort, 
good road noise. You can probably hear it's uh, not overly noisy around the cabin. Bit of tyre noise coming from the front. Not a lot of wind though. But this thing really does just eat up the miles. And it's a very, very comfortable place to spend time. You can sit here two, four, six hours at a time uh, and you don't get tired and you don't get uncomfortable. And for me, like I'm old now, I'm getting a, a sore lower back. It's really important to be able to, to get into a car and, and punch out a, a four or five hour drive if you had a walk afterwards. Now fuel consumption of the V6 while we're touring as well is actually pretty impressive. We're currently sitting uh, on around eight litres per hundred, a bit above what Holden claims. We're doing uh, 104 kilometres an hour. Uh, but this car has got a, a record of 6.7 litres per hundred uh, on a previous drive while we've had it in our care, which we got to say we were pretty impressed with. The suspension tune of the Commodore 2 for this kind of driving is perfectly designed for Australian conditions. It, it sort of sits and, and bumps along and you can feel it go over imperfections in the road and uh, changing surfaces, but it's really, really comfortable the whole time. It doesn't thump, it doesn't crash, it just handles everything you throw at it. You do get a lot of feedback through the road, so you know you're driving the car, but it's a very, very comfortable car uh, to touring. So where are we going on our entertaining family drive? Well, to Lawn, down the spectacular Great Ocean Road. Plenty for the kids to, to see and do. Uh, plus, apparently, they do a cracking all-day breakfast right there on the beach. Now, the Great Ocean Road itself is considered to be one of the world's great drives. Uh, it winds 243 kilometres from here in, in Torquay all the way down to Allensford near Warrnambool in Victoria's Western District. Now, we're only going as far as Lawn, which is about a 50 kilometre drive in, and to get here from Melbourne so far has taken us just a bit over an hour. So it's a really easy day trip to do. All right, well, now we've had a chance to get away from the freeways and highways, we're onto a nice twisting section of tarmac that is what the Great Ocean Road is famous for. Now, handling-wise, coming through some of these tighter bends, you can really feel the weight of the Commodore. It is a big car. The steering itself is weighted quite heavily, and it does feel that you've got quite a lot of car beneath you. It communicates really well though, so there's no lack of understanding of where the car's gonna be. And actually, if you get on the throttle midway through a corner, you can feel the rear end pivot just that little bit uh, to give you that nice grip on corner exit. Now for a bit more fun, we can uh, pop the automatic transmission into a sports mode. There's no paddles on the wheel, but you can tip shift here if you like to. But just putting it in sports, changes uh, the shift timing and shift modes and it does make the car feel a little bit more responsive which is to say when you get a chance to drive it along here the great ocean road is uh, signposted between 60 and 80 kilometers an hour and most of the time you get stuck behind some tourists now the road's opened up now we can have a little bit more fun now power wise uh, the big v6 doesn't come on uh, to its peak 210 kilowatt power point uh, until 6700 rpm but all 350 newton meters are available nice and low at around 2800 rpm that said though you can rev the big guy out and it's actually quite a fun engine to drive sort of from four and a half thousand uh, and up with the gearbox in its sport mode it's nice and responsive and it's actually quite a lot of fun considering that it's not the v8 that said, your fuel economy is going to go right out the window when you start to rev this thing out. But look, it's a trade-off uh, that you get in any car. Now the Commodore might be on the verge of retirement, but it's pretty safe to say that it's, it's still very popular. Every other car that uh, we've seen on the road down here today has been another VE or VF platform Commodore. They're everywhere. And even over this slightly chopped, undulating tarmac that changes from, we can probably hear, coarse chip to smooth, to repaired road, to divots, all sorts of things, the Commodore just eats it all up in its stride. It really is made for this kind of driving. Due to that high power band, response is only really in that kind of exciting range above 4,000 RPM. Uh, low down, two and a half, up to, up to even over three and a half, it can feel a little bit boggy. And particularly if you're, uh, if you're cruising and need to overtake, there can be a, a little bit of a delay on, on kick down from the gearbox if you're overtaking someone. But again, being on the wrong side of the road uh, for as short amount of time as possible as we like when we're doing an overtake, the Commodore handles it really well. All right, well, we're nearly there. Tummies are rumbling. Uh, we're going to find somewhere nice to stop for lunch. Now, the boys have gone off 
to get us some lunch. And as you can see, there's plenty of families and plenty of fun to be had down there. There's actually plenty of fun to be had up here too. On the drive down, both on the highway and on the Great Ocean Road itself, the SV6 Commodore didn't really put a foot wrong. Now we know it is dating in areas. It is at the end of its life after all. You don't get fancy things like LED headlights and some of the other stuff that you may see on a more modern platform. But as a car that's, well, economical, practical, and still just a little bit fun, the SV6 Commodore's still got a lot of life left in it. Now, while it might not be the latest SUV, as a practical family car that works equally well as a sports sedan, or even the other way around, the 2016 Holden Commodore SV6 has shown that an Australian car can still be a great car for Australia.